Now we have some questions on molecular structure. So let's go through each of these one by one. Use the or find the number of valence electrons and then draw the Lewis structures and see what their shapes are. We'll start with water. Each hydrogen has one valence electron. The oxygen has six. So we have eight total valence electrons that we need to incorporate into our picture. So oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen. And I'm kind of not cheating a little bit, but somewhat anticipating how uh, this is going to be drawn. Actually, let me just, let me do it the way that a lot of people probably would do it. Let me draw it like this. And, and be careful, don't look at this and say, oh, it's linear. You got to put in the electrons because what's going to determine the shape is the the bonding and unpaired electrons that are around the central atom that will determine the shape. So no matter how we draw this, really, as well, as it'll turn out, this becomes bent. But no matter how we draw this, it, it doesn't really matter because what's going to matter is the electrons around that central atom. So let's go ahead. We've got eight electrons. I'm going to put four around the central oxygen to satisfy its octet. And so now everything's happy. The hydrogen has two. The oxygens have eight. I have two, four, six, eight electrons in this picture, so I'm good. Now, why is this not linear? Well, these two unpaired electrons, uh, two pairs of unpaired electrons, they push this into no longer being a linear shape. This actually is in the uh, tetra is derived off of the tetrahedral structure, so really should be drawn like this. And so what we get is this bent structure. This is sp3 hybridized, just like CH4 would be. It's just that we have these two um, pairs of unpaired electrons that take up two of the spots that might normally be taken up by bonds. So this is not linear. This is going to be bent. And so this would be bent. And so therefore, 5 would be B. For number 6, Bi3, the boron has three electrons, three valence electrons. The iodine has... 7 times 3, 21. So 21 plus 3, we get 24 electrons for Bi3. Now, I know where this is going, so I'll draw it like this. Again, it doesn't really matter how we draw this. What's going to matter is what's going on with that boron. So let me fill in my electrons. And I'm going to start by filling the valencies of iodine. And you'll note right now I've got my 24 electrons, 6, 12, 18 plus six for the bonds, 24. You might say, well, wait a minute, shouldn't there be one more pair on boron to satisfy its octet? Well, first off, we don't have that pair, so we're kind of stuck. And you might say, well, maybe I should make a double bond and that'll take care of it. Well, no, because boron is an exception to the octet rule. Boron is actually satisfied with six electrons. So boron often makes, as a result, these trigonal planar type structures, because when you just have these three bonding pairs and nothing else around the central atom, you are in trigonal planar territory. So number six is going to end up being C, because that is going to be our structure. So just remember, boron only needs six. And similarly, beryllium, BE, typically satisfied with four. Uh, that doesn't come up that much, but certainly boron having six is very important. Let's go into NH3 next. So uh, we've got five on nitrogen, three on the hydrogen. So we've got eight total here. So we've got nitrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Pop my two electrons up on uh, nitrogen is the unshared pair, and I've got eight electrons in my structure, so this is it. And again, this is quite similar to this bent structure in that it's still tetrahedral. This is still sp3 hybridization. Uh, it's just that one of those bonding positions has been taken up by this non-bonding non, non pair. So again, we are not going to be trigonal planar because it's got four constituents around that central atom instead of three. And so this is going to be trigonal pyramidal, which is choice D which is another one of these uh, tetrahedral derived structures. Br2, well, we've got 14 electrons in Br2, and this one's going to be pretty straightforward. We're just going to set up our pairs. Everything's happy. This is linear. I mean, anything with two atoms in it is going to be linear. That's the only shape it can make. So that one was pretty uh, straightforward. So we can get uh, choice A for number eight. So let's move on to number nine, uh, NH4 plus. So we've got five plus four, we've got nine electrons, but oops, careful, nine electrons, except it's positive. So since it's positive, we've removed one of those electrons. So we actually only have eight. So what's this gonna look like? Well, basically normal NH3, which we saw before, looks like this. Essentially this H plus 
pops on through coordinate covalent bonding, as it's called. And what we get is basically, I mean, this is may not be the best way to draw the structure, but you get something that looks like this. It's not, this is not really a covalent bond, but we'll just draw it like that. It, it, it's fine whether you do that or attach the H like this. I mean, it doesn't really matter for the purposes of answering this question. And so this would be the structure. It is tetrahedral. So we're going to get choice E because we've got those four constituents surrounding it. And so that would be choice E and that's it for those questions.